As a genre, boxing has had a weirdly difficult video game history. Mike Tyson's Punch-Out has long been considered one of the great and key games of the 8-bit era, and its Super NES sequel was well-liked as well. But outside of those, the 90s is a wasteland of middling boxing titles. For every contender like 1991's arcade classic Title Fight, or 1993's relatively warmly received Greatest Heavyweights for the Genesis, there's a wide world of sports boxing, a world champ, five or six ports of George Foreman's KO boxing, Chavez, Riddick Bowe boxing, Muhammad Ali heavyweight boxing, or Foreman for real, games that did little to differentiate themselves and were not well regarded. Boxing games were such a dying art that between 1996 and 1998, there was one single boxing game for any system, console, PC, or handheld, released in North America. That game was Electronic Arts' Knockout Kings, which came out in fall 1998 for the PlayStation 1, and received a bunch of polite reviews saying, it's probably the best boxing game I've ever played. Anyway, I couldn't get into it. I give it a B minus. The only other 32-bit boxing game up to this point was Center Ring Boxing for the Saturn, which is technically a 3D game, but also stars a series of jagged, anonymous, rock'em sock'em robots who really look like they gotta move these refrigerators. This is all preamble to establish just how not a slam dunk putting out a boxing game was in the 1999 video game market. Boxing has been considered a dying art for most of my lifetime, so much so that a common thread throughout all the boxing games of the last four or five full console generations is that every game's roster is either made up or is just eight to ten super famous boxers from 20 to 70 years prior, because there's not 8 to 10 boxers currently working that anybody knows. So if you're gonna do a boxing game in 1999 and get noticed, the thing you gotta do is you gotta do it with style. If you're not aiming for a dry, realistic boxing sim, what you're making is basically a fists-only fighting game, which gives you a lot more flexibility. Ready to Rumble Boxing is cartoony as hell, with goofy characters and magic power-up gloves. Honestly, they could stand to be a little more cartoony, since some of these characters get a little... questionable. Despite Ready to Rumble Boxing being available for basically every system possible at the time, including the Game Boy Color, the character Afro Thunder became one of the Dreamcast's sort of unofficial mascots. Thanks to a series of colorful advertisements presenting the characters of the Dreamcast lineup as a sort of workplace sitcom. He was also in a game-specific one where he wept after fellow boxer Butcher Brown accidentally ate a piece of his afro and Brown's cornermen had to make him cough up a hairball. Just very light, silly stuff. One area that this game absolutely is not playing around on is the learning curve. Even on easy, the one-player championship mode is remarkably challenging. And while button mashing might get you lucky every now and then, this is a game that requires lots of skill, structure, and planning on how your punches are going to land and how you are going to block. Or even on the lowest rungs, these fighters will eat you alive. It's much more addicting on two-player versus mode, where nobody knows what the fuck they're really doing, and we're all just talking shit and swinging wildly. Some characters are lightning quick, some are enormous tanks, so we can pick and choose as nobody blocks and everybody yells and tries to figure out how to activate the stupid rumble special move thing. Come on! 
And that's pretty much it for Ready to Rumble Boxing. This is not a deep game, and is fundamentally limited by its choice of genre. There's just only so much you can do with a boxing game. But it's a lot of fun for the time you have it. And in the annals of video game history, there's way, way less great boxing games than it feels like there should be for a sport so closely linked and structured to the ever-popular fighting game genre. Other than Punch-Out, maybe no boxing game in history connected with audiences quite like Ready to Rumble Boxing, which combined responsive action with vivid, memorable characters. If you're looking for some boxing action, especially fun, silly 3D boxing action, it's as good as it gets. Up next, you ever traveled the globe to throw a park bench at a spooky mummy?